All right, welcome to another episode of the Passive Investor Series. Today with me, I have Mickey McNee. And Mickey, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, yeah, I am a real estate investor and agent who was based in Denver for about a decade, and that's how I know Luke. Um, and then I just recently uh, relocated to Asheville, North Carolina um, for personal reasons, but I'm really excited about it as a real estate market as well. So. Yeah, so Mickey and I actually met because she was the and she was our agent when we bought our first property, my wife and I. And so um, we bought that duplex, and that duplex propelled us into an incredibly successful investing career. So we have Mickey to thank for all of that. Thank you. That's always those are the stories I love to hear. <clears throat> and you've had an incredible investing career, but why don't we start by just talking about your passive investing career? How did you get started in that? And uh, where are you at with that today? Yeah, um, you know, and I'll be honest, it wasn't, um, it's not, it wasn't the sexiest thing to me. I wasn't super excited about who I'm going to do passive. I wanted to be out there flipping and, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Um, but in 2016, I decided to take a sabbatical from my brokerage and travel for two years. And that makes it really hard to handle on the ground uh, investments. So, um, I had uh, just heard a lot about apartment syndications um, and I had a friend who was doing them and so uh, I asked him about it and had some money, I had sold a, a rental so I had some money around um, and uh, just put some funds into that and I've done two now and, and they, it was just the easiest thing because it was just the checks just you know, started rolling in and I thought, wow, this is, uh, this is, Great. This is not bad. <laughs> So I take it they're going pretty well. They're going great. Yeah. They're, all the reports we get are always, you know, exceeded our projections. And yeah, that's great. Like that. Yeah. So, you know, that's quite a leap going from hands-on, doing it yourself, uh, being the main point of contact for everything to essentially being completely hands-off. How did, how did you cross that threshold? That's a great question, and and I feel like it's very relevant pertinent to me. But all of us as real estate investors, we we are control freaks, and we do like to be in charge. Um, and I've definitely done like projects with people where they were in charge, and it has not gone the way I wanted it to go. So um, I think for me, the biggest thing was trusting the person that I was and the company that I was going in with. You know, I wanted to know that they had they had a good track record. Um, and, uh, the thing I think that made the trend, the, the whole thing easiest for me was their documentation, their proposals, I felt were really comprehensive, but also very, uh, easy to read, like in layman's language. So that someone who hadn't, you know, read a, a 10 page legal partnership <laughs> for a syndication before could understand it. Um, that was really, that was really helpful. So yeah, I was a bit of a, a leap of faith. Um, but again, just sort of doing your due diligence and, and really having it, the people having a good reputation, that, that makes it easier. Yeah, you know, in multifamily syndication, which is what you're doing and what I'm doing, it's incredibly complex and it's very difficult to synthesize these complex terms down to something where people feel comfortable investing. So that's a critical skill. But um, so what, it, what were some of the fears that you had going into it? Obviously losing all your money is a big fear, but. Were, were there any others? Yeah, and you know, I don't, I don't think I was ever worried about losing all my money. It seemed like if you had, if there was this two hundred unit apartment building somewhere, then somehow, <laughs> maybe that's not, maybe that's not the best way to look at it. But it seems like, um, no, I think, um, yeah, I think the fears are, you know, they're just they're the smallest of it's like those pay the payments are going to start coming, right? Like they're. Mm -hmm. they're Paying us, you know, because there's a lot of language in those documents about, well, if we, you know, if we're not making money, then this is what happens. And yeah. if we all go bankrupt or someone takes the kitty and, and moves to the Bahamas, you know. Yeah. Um, but again, like the onboarding process was really great where they had live calls where you could be there and they would answer questions from anyone. Yeah, that was immensely helpful. Um, and being able to see pictures and um, and things, and then and then and then, I think probably the other fear for me is like just not knowing what's happening by 
the company that I'm with, they are, they send out monthly reports with, you know, hey, we built a new barbecue shelter and I'll show you a picture of it. And, you know, I haven't driven by, so I assume it's real, but. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's something I'm like the stock market is you, you physically, if you were to choose to, you could. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, I would hope that your sponsor would be willing to at least allow you to see that and be there. And um, I know some sponsors will even invite passive investors to the actual property during the due diligence period. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I actually just met with a guy who uh, also he just syndicate. He puts money in as well. And he was saying he, he will always go drive to the property. Right. There are some people that do that, which I think is it's, it's Super important. smart. Yeah. 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 So yeah. You, you know, learning syndication and it's difficult. So did you have some resources that you used to educate yourself or did you just go on someone's word? How did you, how did you go about that? I did. I did. Um, I, I did a lot of web research. Um, I mean, I'm always on bigger pockets. So uh, I, you know, sure. I listened to a few podcasts mm -hmm. um, and then I went on the website of the company I was investing with to sort, of, to sort of see what resources they had and what information, you know, and they do a lot of blog posts, podcasts and things like that. So um, that was helpful. Um, and then, um, yeah, it was really just understanding like what is the risk involved, you know, and what is my recourse if things go wrong. Um, and that was pretty easy to get that information. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how this first deal is structured and, and what some of your recourse is if you were to have that happen. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know if I can actually answer that right now. Uh, Isn't that terrible? I just know that the checks keep showing up. And I just know the checks have been showing up for almost two years now. Do so. you know if there's a preferred return? I do know that there is a preferred return. Yeah, so what that means is basically the first, however many percentages, most deals are anywhere from five to 8%, um, get paid directly to the investor before anyone on the general partnership side gets any money, which is important. Yes. Most deals I see these days have that built in, um, and I suspect that yours do as well. Yes, they do, and that was one of the things, and that was one of the things I had to ask questions about, and I went direct to them. I was just like, this is what I don't understand about the documentation. Where am I in the hierarchy? Um, yeah. You know, what does this mean um, they were able to satisfy me at that time, you know, just to say, this is what it means, so I was able to go in with eyes open. Yeah, and that's, that's really important, too, because the private placement memorandum, I don't know how long yours was, but Ours generally are you know, close to 200 pages, sometimes a little less, but that's a hefty document and it's full of legalese that somebody might not understand. So how did, you know, did you just ask a bunch of questions? Did you get an attorney to help you look through it? I did ask a bunch of questions. Um, I did not have an attorney walk me through it. I probably should have. Um, however, I sort of relied on my background in real estate because I read a lot of contracts all the time. So I did a lot of like skimming of definitions and things and then pulled out the sections that related to my class of investor and the really big stuff, you know. Well, and you've, you have taken money from investors before. So you had an idea of how things go. You've actually taken yes. money and yes. Return a fantastic return too. But so you you had a little more experience than most people, I would imagine. Absolutely, yeah. I would say anyone that's going into that for the first time should. It's worth you know paying a lawyer to to look at it, or you yeah. know, a real lawyer or someone who specializes in that type of documentation. Right. Yeah. Well, if you were to, you know, do it all over again, would you would you have gone sooner? Would you have changed something? Would you have put more money in? I mean, what? If you had to do it all over again, would you? Yeah, if I had to do it all over again, um, yeah, I definitely, I, I don't know if I could have done it sooner just for life timing, you know, and all of that, but um, I, I definitely would have put more money in. Um, I partnered up with a couple of friends, actually, in order to meet the minimum on our first one. Um, and uh, yeah, I, well, and I'll tell you why, because, because, 
my biggest hesitation with going into syndication was it's only going to pay me eight to 10%, you know, up front. Like I get my IRR on the back. I was like, Oh, you know, 8%, like I could go do a flip and make 30%. It'll be awesome. You know? So some of the money that I had that I could have put into that, I did go and do a flip where I did not end up with a great partner. <laughs> and, um, and I lost that money, yeah. you know? And meanwhile, I'm traveling the world, trying to organize things and all this stuff. So for me, yeah, just knowing that that check is coming in, I mean, because it's really, that's what it's all about, right? It's like, if enough checks come in every month, you don't go to the day job. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm just really starting to value that, the slow and steady return, um, much more than the shiny object, big yeah. dollar. Yeah, that's, that's really critical for a lot of people is you're forfeiting a little bit of higher return, but you're gaining a whole bunch of passive time. You know, that's, that's one of the benefits is it's, I don't know how much time you spent um, looking at your reports or analyzing your sponsor, but your dollar per hour had to have been pretty high. Yeah. And um and what I didn't understand until I had gone through the first one was um, that they actually refinanced 40% of our money out within the first, I want to say 18 months, which was ahead of schedule. So all of a sudden I had 40% of my money back and I was making the same. So my return just bumped up That's awesome. um, and I was like, Ooh, I could. And then, so then I took that and I rolled it straight into the next one. That's <laughs> that was a done deal. That's awesome. So you, it must have been a fairly obvious or deep value add for that to happen so quickly. Yeah, I mean, I think the way they're targeting their their buildings, um, they just have a really good sense of where improvements can be made, where rents can be raised, and yeah, and I mean, it's just like everything got renovated. You know, the out the infrastructure around the buildings was dealt, you know, was improved, um, and rents were put up more than we expected so yeah so it seems to be a fairly common theme that folks that want to get into raising professional money or doing larger deals invest passively first is that's been your case right so you've gone on to do bigger deals now and you're raising syndication funds right yeah um i think that is i think that is the case and, I, and for me i think it it would ha it had to be because right. you know you go in with someone who knows what they're doing you see how the process works you also learn what the pitfalls can be and then um yeah and i i'm technically not raising syndicated funds oh. <laughs> we uh we are in a syndication yeah, SEC. but i do raise money for individual projects and i do raise money for for mobile home park investing and um and we are pooling people and resources around so Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely say so my taking investment funds. Like, it, it yeah, I'm taking investment funds. Thinking. Yeah, and every time I do a deal, whether I it's me lending or it's me borrowing, I learn something new that then gets implemented into That's the next great. round. Yeah. So, what would you say is the most common question you get from potential investors that you're talking to? Yeah, um, you know, I think they they want to understand ownership. You know, are they a part owner of the property or, you know, what's this whole securities thing about? Um, they they want to know, you know, can I can I get my money back if I need it? That's a very right. common one. Yeah, I think especially for new people. Yep. Um, and but, you know, mostly I think people just they ask me about my experience. So uh, you probably have this, too, where they're like, how did it work out for you? And you're able to say, you know, well, this is how it worked for me. And yeah. I think, yeah. It, it helps that you had such a good experience too. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Yeah. Because I've known some people that had a poor performance on their very first one and it kind of scarred them for a while. And it is a possibility that you could have a bad passive investing experience, but it sounds like things are going pretty well for you. Well, that's a good reminder though, because I think when you do have a good experience, you think, oh, great, this is how they all go. Um, and so maybe you loosen your uh, sense of needing to do investigation and research and stuff, but you, it just goes to show you every deal stands on its own and you really should do your due diligence every time. Right. 
So just wrapping up here, what if you had to give advice to someone who is maybe on the fence about passive investing, how would you convince them to do it or not to do it? Yeah, I think um, I think it's a great idea, and I think it's a really great idea for um, people who are are time poor. Um, you know, I just know I know a lot of the people I work with are sort of young professionals. They have great W two jobs or great businesses that they own, and so they have cash, um, and they do dream of getting into real estate, but they they don't have the time because they're busy with work and busy with family and young kids. Yep. and all that stuff and it's i feel like it's the kind of thing where if you want to invest in real estate and you want to get started as soon as possible because that's how you maximize mm -hmm. the value at the end um then it's just a super easy way to get started you yeah. do your research and then you send a wire and then you just watch money come into your bank account why yeah. wouldn't you do that yeah and you know i think i think a lot of real estate investors who want to get into real estate think that the only avenue for a fairly passive income is to own a single family home rental. And most of what I do is just educating people like, hey, there is another option. You don't have to be a landlord. You don't have to fix toilets. It's fairly easy to just send a wire and start collecting checks. And of course, there more goes into it than that, like you were saying. Sure. But, yeah. This is you know, as like you were saying, one of the easiest ways to get started it's just passive investing. Yeah, and I love that you said that because it is true. Like that's the conversation I have with a lot of people is they think investing in real estate means buying single family rentals. And I'm here to tell you, like I've been in the business for a decade. I hate the thought of owning single family rentals. It makes my stomach turn because there's just so much involved. Even if you have a property manager, there's just a stress there that doesn't yeah. go with me. Yeah, and I feel like if you can lend money, if you can do private lending or you can do syndications or you can do and essentially make the same return with so much less hassle and risk, then do it. Yeah, and there's so much greater security in large syndications, like you were saying. Like, you didn't know why that 200-unit building felt more professional, but it did. And yeah. maybe what you didn't know back then was just even something as simple as vacancy, like turnover. 10 tenants leave out of a 100 unit building, it's not the end of yeah. the world. Yeah. 10 tenants leave from a 10 unit building, it is. <laughs> it is the end of the world. Yeah. yeah. You just get to scale. And if you get hooked up with someone so professional like you did, you get economies of scale, you get discounts on you know, toilets, you get discounts on flooring, all these things that add just a tiny bit of value to every deal, but really adds up in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, you know, how can people get in touch with you if they have questions, if they have, you know, ideas about mobile home parks, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, um, you can find me on Bigger Pockets, Mickey McNee. Um, my email is mickey at 33zenlane.com. And uh, I'm always happy to chat with people about their real estate investing strategy and what might work well for them. So cool. Hit me up. Even including single family homes, right? Including, if that's your jam, I am more than happy to help you with that. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Thanks.